You ready? I'll just pop it there. And it closes it. It's soft closed. That's excellent. Hi, good morning. Welcome back to the channel on this beautiful Saturday morning. Now, I never make any secret the fact that I love the Tesla Model 3. I love the way it looks, particularly this Highland version, particularly in the red. I love the way it drives. I love the technology, but it's not perfect. The one thing I don't like about the Model 3 is the frunk. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the storage space. I hate the fact I've got to lean on it every time I want to close it, and I've got to lean on it in a special way, otherwise I risk denting it. Well, today, I'm going to install an accessory that makes that problem go away, and I think you're going to like it. Stay with me and I'll show you the full installation and whether or not it's worth the effort. So to open the front in a Tesla Model 3, you either tap the screen inside the car. If you've got the sexy buttons or the commander installed, you can either use the buttons or hold the handle. Watch my previous video. Or if you've got the Tesla app, it is literally just a case of opening it and then it's just one of the icons on the home page. Now that's bit, that bit straightforward. It pops it open just a little bit and then you lift it the rest of the way up. Now to close it said you have to push it down and gas struts open it, which is great but it means you have to push it down and then lean on that last bit. I said, and I find that really uncomfortable. So what this kit we're gonna to install today is when you push it down so it's down near just at that point where it's just at the bottom, it will grab it and close it for you on a soft close. So there's, you'll never have to lean on it again, which sounds brilliantly appealing to me. So let me introduce you to the kit. So I'll cut to this camera here. I'm filming this on three different cameras, so hopefully you'll miss nothing. So if we cut to this 360 camera from above. So the kit itself is here. Now this is what connects to the existing motor. Um, now this just pulls one a little bit of the mechanism in there just to pull the um, the latch down. This is the motor that connects to this, so this is what pulls this wire. This just takes a power feed, which then feeds into this unit here, and this unit here just plugs straight into that power unit, and at the other end, it's just going straight onto 12 volt battery. Now you may not be familiar with the fact that in Teslas, even though you've got this huge multi kilowatt hour battery in the floor, they still have a regular 12 volt battery. Um, I'm not entirely sure actually why. I guess it's the lights and the everyday runnings of the car, but, but needless to say, it has one and that's what we're gonna wire into today. Now also in the kit, you've got some tie wraps. Um, you've got a prying toy, which you'll need to be able to get um, things out of the way. Uh, you've got this tiny little nut and bolt. I'll explain that when we get to it. You've got this little 10 millimeter socket set. Um, you can use that, but I'm not going to. Uh, and then you've got this little Allen key, which you will actually use a little bit later on in the video. What I would suggest you have, and these are the only tools you need, is a 10 millimeter proper bit, and then a choice of ways to use it. So if you're doing something a bit more gentle, you might want a handheld version, or if you want something with a bit more power, then you can slot it into a power driver. Uh, which I will be using as well. I also tend to keep just a, just a pair of pliers nearby because there's always something that, that is a little bit easier when you use pliers. So I'm gonna get these bits out of the way and we'll just pop them on the floor and then we'll start the install because it's really straightforward according to the installation video, which I have watched online. So this kit's being provided to me by Tilliard. So huge thanks to them for the partnership. Um, they've got a great range of Tesla products on their website. If you have a look on the link up there, you can have a good browse yourself and I've even got you a discount code. So if you go to the description below, you can click on the link down there. Okay, so let's get these bits out of the way. Careful not to lose the tiny things like the Allen key and the little nut and bolt. Now, first things first, we've got to take the um, central hub out. Now, there's a couple of bits you've got to do before you can just jump straight in on that. And we'll start by getting this front bit out. So just on this little bit here, which I'll show you on the GoPro, um, lean that there. So you can just about see here, this is literally just the uh, tow hook and it's just part of a plastic unit. You also have a button, which is the emergency release for the front. Never really understood why you'd need that. If you find yourself locked in that space, um, then at least you know there's a button, but it's a pretty tiny space to be stuck in. But anyway, um, if I just pop that up there and then this realistically, you can just get your thumbs in and just pop it off and then it lifts out. So then you've got a power connection on the back, which I'll show you there. If you can see it is literally just a case of getting that cable out. It can be a bit stiff because I had a go at this the other day. And this is one of those times that if you're struggling a little bit, oh, there you go, no, it came out. So we've got that, that's disconnected. But if you are struggling, this is one of those times where that pair of pliers just are really gently pulling out, but be careful. Uh, but that's out now, so we can just pop that on the floor, out of the way. 
And then we can start to take these other bits apart. So this big plastic piece along here, it just all pops in and out. So you get your fingers underneath it and then just pull up on the poppers and you'll find that it, there we go, just pops up and lifts out. So underneath I said it's just a series of these poppers all the way along. So nothing to worry about there, really easy to, uh, to install. So we'll pop that on the floor. And then back over here, we've got this extra little air vent bit on top here. So if I just point the GoPro at it, and you can see it on the 360 anyway, you need to remove this bit first. It's just got these three poppers, so just a case of pulling up, pulling up there, and then pulling up on the top one. So that's now out of the way. But as you can see, it's really easy to just pop back in when you're done as well. So I'll pop that bit over here as well. And then you've got the main, um, whatever you'd call it, I suppose, the, the kind of... Uh, bucket bit, um, which is held in by four 10 millimeter nuts, which are here. So we'll grab the power driver, like it's in reverse, and just, just loosen them off. So once you've got those four, make sure you put them somewhere safe. They're all the same, so you don't need to worry about mixing them up. So pop that down there and then we're left with this. So get your fingers under there and just start to lift it. You can feel that there is a popper up top on both sides here, which if I show you from underneath, these red ones here. So you just gotta be conscious that they're probably the last ones that'll give up the ghost. So if we get that out of the way, and then you're back in the boot. Now, uh, oh, front, sorry. So now you can see obviously all the various bits that are in here. We're focusing on this. So there's two elements. We're going to install the motor um, over there somewhere, the pulley system onto this, and then the power source will come from the battery over there. So if I show you, we'll do the, we'll get the power bit out of the way first, actually. So over on the 12 volt battery, on the Highland, you've got this nice easy fit on the positive end, which has just got these little terminals here for you to add, um, easily add additional things that you want to take power for. And then down here, you've got the, uh, the earth, the negative. So we're just going to attach our red cable to that one and our black cable to that one and then we'll just leave those dormant until we've installed the unit. Okay, so we start with the red one. Tend to start with live when you're connecting batteries. Keep that bolt in my hand. And then just feed it through that top hole. Make sure I line this up perfectly. Okay. And then just, let's just turn that bolt just enough so we've got at least some bites. There we go, so it's grabbed it. So now you might want to use your pliers and maybe consider holding the bolt still on the back and then just use your Allen key at the front just to tighten that off so that it's not going anywhere. You can hear the uh, cooling system of the car is alive and well. And right next to me here, <laughs> this vent, um, right, so that's on, and we can put this red cover straight back over the top, and it's done, and it's secure, and that's it. That's really, it's that easy an installation. Um, over on the negative end, now what we'll do is, if we look at this beam, can I get under it? Not really, so I think we'll just feed the red power cable, maybe just pop it under there. It would, would have been easier to do this the other way around, I suspect, but let's just get these cables kind of as unintrusive as possible. So there we go, so that's just out of the way there and just feeding over here so it's not causing any problems or getting in the way of anything there we go that's nice and neat and then our earth down here so it is just a case of this connection here so let me grab my 10 millimeter and we'll do this one manually so if i can just yeah that loosens off easily enough and it is just a case of sliding this in behind so there we go, so we've got our earth connection there. And then just tighten it back up. So that's our power source done. That's it, it's that straightforward. So now it's just a case of actually installing the motor. And once we've got that installed, then we can look to um, plug this in and connect it and we'll get it, try and uh, get it working. Okay, and then we're on to the interesting bit, the motor. So there are two 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts, 10 millimeter bolts holding it on. Now we want to unplug it first. Now that's dead easy. Just a case of this red tab here. If you just pull it out, the plug comes with it. And that's it, we're disconnected. So the only thing holding it now is this motor of its own, 
that operates the pulley system that actually closes, uh, well, sorry, opens the um, frunk. So then 10 millimeter bolts, we will go back to the power driver for this. Now, before you do anything, it's suggested at this point, because you wanna make sure it goes back in the same place, otherwise perhaps, you know, it won't be at the same height, is maybe get a Sharpie and just draw around that. Just, you know, when you're putting it back together, you're putting it back in exactly the same place. So I should be fine putting that back on. So let's make sure, we, make sure we're in reverse, we are. And we'll take that out altogether. And we'll take that out altogether. Pop them somewhere really safe, so there. And that is your motor, so it's disconnected. So on the back of it, you can see you've got this pulley system and this is what opens the front, so that pulls this mechanism here. Now there is an extra piece that you install as part of the kit, which is this kind of, kind of goldish looking piece there. Now I've already pre-installed this, but if you're not sure how to do it, here's a video that Tilliard themselves provide. So the next thing you do on here is you take the tension off the spring. So just by unhooking it there, and the tension is coming off this point because it's this bit you're going to be working on. So if I now grab the kit, now we don't need the motor bit, that bit can be out of the way. We're talking about this bit. So if I bring this mechanism in behind, you'll see the holes line up that hold it to the car, these two big 10 millimeter holes at the side. And then the crucial bit is this. Now, one of the reasons why you take the tension off the hook is the way you install that is you've got to go just under there and you've just got to get it over that piece of metal there. So relatively straightforward, and then you put the tension back in the hook, but make sure this ring goes underneath where you put in the spring so that you're not catching anything that you're not meant to. So if I put the tension back in, so you see it's underneath, it's not catching this ball, it's nice and neat. And that's it. That's literally the extent of that installation. So then all you've got to do is put it over here. So we've got those cables out of the way. And then we've just got to line up those 10 millimeter bolts again. Now, I can see where the holes are. So let's just hold it in place for now. Get this power cable out of the way for a minute. So we'll just do that by hand. So we've got some, um, to the position at least. And if I just grab the, the handle here, take the 10 millimeter off there and we'll just tighten this by hand just so it's holding it in place. So we don't want it super tight because remember we want to make sure that the positions match exactly where they were before. So there's got to be a degree of just lining that up. So once that's hand tightened, you can then position this exactly where it's meant to be in relation to where it was before, which I can see my markings. And that, that looks right to me at that side. And then that side, there we go. So I think that's where it was before. That's important by the way, because obviously if you put that at the wrong height and it's holding the uh, frunk, then it's gonna hold it slightly lower and you end up with a bit of a lip here and you don't want that. So it's important to make sure that's lined up, but that looks good to me. I'll just make sure it's in place by putting a little bit of power behind it. Just the one, I don't wanna go nuts with it. It's not about trying to break anything, it's just about holding it in place and that is good and solid now. Okay, which means you're then just left with the actual motor that runs it. Now, in terms of just being neat, this bit's relatively straightforward because you've got the option, bear in mind this central tub bit will go here. So you've got this space around the side and there's actually a nice convenient spot really near the earth where you can just connect it. So if I unscrew this and I'll bring the GoPro around this way so you can see what I'm doing. So we're just gonna use this bit here which you can just about see. So using that hole. And then all I'm gonna do is feed this in from below and then we'll just hand tighten this for now. It's another 10 millimeter to be fair. So if you've got your pliers to hand and maybe your hand tightening uh, option with your 10 mil, maybe pop that, put it where you want it, hold it underneath and then just hand tighten just so it's nice and secure and out of the way. And that is it. I mean, installation wise, that's in place, that's solid. That's in place, that's solid. 
we've got the power feed to it. All we've got to do then is plug it in. Uh, and then obviously we're just gonna tidy up some cables a little bit because there's dangly bits here and there. We don't want that. But if I plug that in, okay, so there's now power to the, um, the soft close. When I plug the mains power in here, it's probably gonna tell the car that something's changed electrically and it'll probably set the alarm off. So I'll probably just have to turn that off quickly. You ready, here we go. There we go. But easy enough to fix, you just gotta go and open the door. Okay, so there's power back to everything now. So I suppose the test is to just close it and see what happens. So if I make sure that my camera's not gonna hit anything on its way down, I'll grab the um, GoPro, we'll just pop it there so you can watch the mechanism. And what should happen now is when I close it far enough and avoid the cameras hitting each other. You ready? I'll just pop it there. And it closes it, it's soft closed. That's excellent. It feels a little lower on the left actually, so I might just adjust the bolt. I thought I'd got it right, but maybe not. But that's it, it soft closes. So let's have another test. So if I go back to the app and I'll open it and just lift it up and then put it back down. Oh, I like that. I will never have to lean on this again. That's brilliant. And that installation's taken, what, 15 minutes? That's superb. Right, let's get this open. Let's adjust that on the left, tidy up some of this wiring, and then I will put everything back together. So stick with me. <laughs> yeah, just miss. This last piece is just a case of making sure that it clips into all the places it's meant to go. Just kind of tucks under there a little bit. There's your first piece. That's it. And then lots of clicks all the way along. And then making sure you're in at that end. And then you've got your four bolts, which will definitely power drive these ones. And with that, it's fully installed. I think that's excellent. So if we go around with the GoPro, it's all gone back together perfectly. And when you're looking down through that gap, the only thing that's different is this little black pin there that otherwise you just wouldn't know was there. Now, of course, the all, all important test so I'll pop this camera out of the way so it doesn't get squashed. Let's pop that in there. It's just a case of dropping it and it pulling it closed. That is outstanding. And such a better solution than having to lean on it. And I believe there's an extra functionality in it which allows you, that should you accidentally open it, because at the minute, on a regular Model 3, if you accidentally open it, maybe you push the button on the app and you don't mean to, it's open. I mean, it will just stay open till somebody opens it and closes it for you or leans on it or somebody just robs whatever's in your trunk. Whereas this, when you open it, if you do nothing and then wait, I believe, 90 seconds, which is what we'll do now. A few moments later. Do, 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 do. And there you have it. So 90 seconds later, if you accidentally open this or intentionally open it, it will close automatically knowing the car is secure at all times. So just in case the fact that you're never gonna damage your wrists again by leaning on it wasn't enough. Also, it's extra security because if you accidentally open that, it will close itself. That's brilliant. And that, honestly, it couldn't have been easy to install. If you were scaling it like one really easy, like, you know, sticking a sticker on, five really complicated where you're taking everything apart and rewiring, that was an easy two to two and a quarter. Not because of technical ability, but just having the courage to just pop things off. All cars come apart if you just know where to pull. And Teslas are relatively uncomplicated in that sense. So it's a really easy install that anyone can do. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Thanks again to Tilliard for providing this fantastic piece of kit. Do check out their website. Do check out the discount code in the description below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. I've got some fantastic cosmetic extras coming for the car. Those ones that are literally one out of five to install, but just make it look cool. Stick with me, subscribe, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Bye.